Had to duck down a bit. Hopefully you can hear me. The closer we get to tree line, the more we can hear that wind. pitch black there's rain and we're in New Hampshire so that can only mean that Mike is on the trip because I feel like this is a little bit of deja vu that's what Danielle said really she actually said uh, you guys have the worst luck when you go by yourselves on a New Hampshire trip yeah here's the uh, situation oh here look yeah oh look weather well I'll tell them where we are we're in New Hampshire. There's the, there's the right weather about, radar. Right about there. So right now we got a mix of precipitation with about 34 degrees, 33 degrees throughout the day. Yeah. And then it'll go down to freezing. Yeah. And uh, sunrise is about to happen. It's 6.09 now. 6.35 will be sunrise. And we have to get there before 5.30. So we have some time to maybe get some wood, maybe a fire. Yeah, we are back in New Hampshire. Uh, Pemigewasset Wilderness. We're at an unofficial trailhead uh, by Mount Hale, so we'll get into all the goodness later. But yeah, weather is uh, less than ideal. It is February, uh, late February, but um, they haven't had rain in quite some time. They've had nothing but snow, but then I guess they found out we were coming. Yes. And um, yeah, so for <laughs> one day, for one day, it's gonna, uh, we got a warm front coming in from Canada, which is kind of ironic. They should be giving us a cold front. What's up, Canada? Um, gonna jack the temperatures up above freezing. <laughs> gonna jack those temperatures up above freezing. Mike is jacking the temperature up in the car right now. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, we're going to get rain. Now, the good news is uh, tomorrow things should, um, well, the temperature is going to be up above average the whole time we're here. But uh, the, this, we, we're here three days. First day, all rain. Second two days, Mike, you're saying looking like the, we'll be, be nice. will be really nice, right? Mm. So I don't know how much footage we're going to get today because right now we are in the car. We slept here last night, obviously. We actually had air mattress set up all here. Slept, had our gear up front. Um, we're gonna get all ring geared up. Um, I do have a GoPro, so hopefully you'll get some footage. But really, the goal today is just beeline to uh, what is called Guy Out Camp site. And uh, we were gonna set up a tent there, and hopefully we still will. But there is an option of a shelter. Um, if we get there and we're frustrated enough, because it is nine miles away. Burger King. Oh, this, is, this is the best intro ever. It is about nine miles, um, and we don't know how broken in the trail is. So by the time we get there, um, when's sunset again? 5.30. 5.30. Um, anyway, we might just be frustrated, but we do have the option of just staying in that shelter. Screw it. Um, and we'll figure out all the rest from there. But basically our deal is to get to that guy out sh uh, shelter, and then that's the bonds area. We'll do uh, bond cliffs. On day two, we'll try to bag some peaks. Yes. Then come back to the tent site, we're thinking, crash, and then day three, we'll exit a different route, hit Mount Hale, bushwhack back to the car. It's not really bushwhack, it's an unofficial trail, but we'll get into all that. Anyway, right now we're gonna have some coffee, thanks to Mike and his ginormous <laughs> thermos. <laughs> thermos. Oh my God, it's nice. And it was nice to be able to actually sleep on something comfortable. Target air mattress, 40 bucks with, well, it has a car adapter, but you pre, pre inflated it. So, best sleep ever at a, at a trailhead. How'd I wake you up? Um, by, well, it just suddenly deflated. It was pitch black. So. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. He. But anyway, we're gonna get it together. We'll share the rest of the details with you once we actually get on the uh, trail and uh, it's like we'll get a dry up. spell. Breakfast time. It is getting light. I'll quit my yapping. We'll eat some food, get fueled up. See, there's my map printouts. So we're parked right around here. And Little Mount, Little River Road at the end. I'm gonna do a, like one mile unofficial kind of bushwhack and come up here. This is just my printout for day one. Hit North Twin. Hopefully get down here to Geo Camp. 
the camp I was talking about, so we'll see what happens. How's that coffee? Gone. Empty. Nice. All right. You know which way we're going? Oh, look, my camera runs froze up already. I guess it's not that warm. Yeah, over here there should be a, a little unofficial trail that links us up with the uh, North Twin Trail. Not quite ready for snowshoes yet. Digging in a little bit though. I said not quite ready for snowshoes yet, but we're, we got a nice little blanket of snow to start. I mean, it's packed out, but it's still yeah. spongy. Makes you a little work a little bit. Yeah. Should be about a mile on this. It's broken in a little bit, but it would be nice to get in the woods. It's a little less monotonous. A real sign? Thank God. I'm ready to I'm ready to get into the woods a little more. A little bit of half frozen hail slash rain. It's probably getting a little too wet for the uh, camera. Might have to put that on that hiatus for a little bit. Hydration station. Stay hydrated. Just because you're not sweating, you're breathing hard. You are expelling water. I'm sweating underneath. And you're sweating underneath. But I mean, just because you're not dripping sweat, you do breathe. Well, if you're not breathing, you're in trouble. I might have really uh, had a bad day. Yeah. All right, well, anyway, I, I gotta get my flu's gone. Huh? I think the flu's gone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mike's working the flu out. This is the new flu remedy is to go out and sleep and walk around for a few days. Yeah, I had the flu three days ago. <laughs> Test positive for flu A. Thought I wasn't gonna make it. Like it you were gonna busy. die? No, I never got to that point. Oh, okay. I'm strong, you know, but. <laughs> Still long like an ox. This is the tail end of it, and this is how you treat it. Yeah. Don't let it beat you. That's right. That's the inspirational tip of the day from Mike the Explorer, otherwise known as DJ McCullough. All right, we got a little break in the sleep. We're thinking this 90 degree turn to the left here is the unofficial or abandoned, but still heavily used fire warden's trail to go straight up to hail. A lot of day hikers use that and we might use, we might make a loop where we come home down from hail. But I believe we're gonna keep going straight on North Twin here towards that Geo campsite. We're getting intermittent breaks in the uh, sleet and hail and stuff, so I'll pull the camera out when I can. Keep you along with me. The tracks are definitely getting lighter though, but we are still seeing activity, so there's a little bit up there. A little stack break around 9.47. Definitely tough work, smashing through the snow, but it's, it's still, it's a decent breakout, but it's got some loose stuff on top. Nothing terrible, but burns, burns some extra calories for sure, trying to stay warm and sludge through snow instead of nice, uh, warm, hard ground. A little hand warmer time. Uh-oh, gonna be leaking hand warmer all over yourself. <sighs> oh man, gotta get my stuff together. I think I need a little caffeine. And I keep trudging along. I've been daydreaming about dinner and it's uh, barely past breakfast time. Good times. Snowshoe time. Tired of doing that. <laughs> I was post holding. I put these things on. Whoa, I'm glad I kept my distance. Woo! I would have pummeled me. Behind you. Oh man, yeah, it's been brutal. It's, it's brutral. The toughest like tra traverse I've done, even minus the snowshoes and. The yeah, it's uh, it seems like this. Is, I've never done this trail in the uh, in any season. It seems like it's probably pretty <laughs> brutal. Pretty uh, yeah, 
challenging anyway, but with the snow and the uh, minimal sleep, it's challenging. I'll give it that. I am being challenged. Yeah. But we will get there. It's about 2 o'clock. Somewhere over halfway in. Uh, at least we better be at this point in the day. This is the hardest thing hike I've ever done, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Had to duck down a bit. Hopefully you can hear me. The closer we get to tree line, the more we can hear that wind. And uh, I would call it intimidating sounding to say the least. So we're probably gonna lose audio at some point if we haven't already. But should make for some good views. Right Mike? Huh? <laughs> Said right? Yeah. Right. So, an actual amount. An amount. A sign! A sign! I'm losing my mind. Here's the sign. Where's the... We gotta go towards... I guess we keep going on North Twin. North Twin Spur? South Twin Mountain. Getting back into some cover here, which is nice. Uh, the not so nice part is the trail is complete, completely unbroken at this point. We're just, uh, there's no signs of anybody else on this. Luckily we got blazes, but Mike is being so gracious as to break right now because he has two poles. One of mine failed, so I'm just got one, so. Whoa, it's, I lost the light. You lost the light? Uh-oh. I'll be right there. Hey, all right, anyway. We're going towards South Twin Mountain. Uh, losing a little elevation here, so I can't wait to uh, go back up and again.
Yes. Snow's going to get really deep over here from the way the wind's blowing it down this trail. I can't wait. That was insane. And this trail isn't broken. Oh my god. So now we're headed down towards Bondcliffe and the uh, Geo campsite slash shelter. It's about six, no, I'm sorry, it's five o'clock right now. Yeah, five o'clock. And uh, just trying to make our way there. Based on our timing, I'm thinking that uh, we're going to be uh, just crashing in the shelter. Screw that. I don't know how well this is coming out. But we are, uh, it's around, it's only 6.18, but it is dark as all hell. And we're getting some freezing rain. Awesome. So, anyway. Just going for that shot. Hey, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Those are tent poles. This does not, it's a funny looking shelter. Oh. We're uh, waking up, so you're just gonna have to bear with us. A little windy. Um, here's the deal, last night, I'll show you on the map what we were doing. Um, we were coming from here, that's around where the car was. Coming up here, around, we hit North Twin, that's where we got pounded by wind the first time. South Twin, that's where we really got pounded the second time. And then, when we started night hiking, when I talked to you last night, we were around here. Somewhere around here, and it is the Appalachian Trail, so it was pretty nice and wide. Um, but, we found a blaze, and then within two feet of that blaze, we could not find the trail again. And I know what you're, some of you are saying, well you had a GPS, how do you not find the trail? Um, your GPS might be accurate, but the trail that they put on that GPS map, the trail could be within one to two hundred yards of that. I mean, look at the... And they change routes of that sometimes. Exactly. So look at your GPS sometime when you're dead on the trail, and it'll say the trail's a hundred yards to the left of you. And then when you're off the trail, it'll say you're on it. Um, survival situation, yeah, you could, you know, go towards a road or something, but when there's snow... <laughs> A uh, hundred feet to your left is like a needle in a haystack and to it's find nighttime. a time. Yeah, and you're trying to find a white blaze. So the point is, um, it sucked. We spent a while trying to find a trail, and then we just gave up and said, let's just camp. Um, so we did, and we're camped somewhere around here, just short of that um, Mount Geo and then the Geo um, tent site. Now, the original plan was to go out of here, up here, over the hill, down to the car. My fear today is that this trail will not be broken in just like this one. I mean, this one, there was absolutely no break in whatsoever. We were completely just going by blazes and what looked like the trail. I don't want that to happen to us on the way out because we need to get to the car on Sunday. Not today, but tomorrow. And um, if that situation happened while we we're just trying to get to the car, I would want to jump off a cliff. It would suck. So I think what we're going to do today because again, we have two more days, today and tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday. Um, we're actually gonna backtrack where we've been because we know that we can find that trail. Hell, we broke it ourselves. Um, but split the trip in half. So at some point, we're gonna camp tonight. Um, we're still debating that. We're gonna see how conditions go. Speaking of conditions, another thing is wind. We can't pull down a weather um, report. We've obviously kept our eye on them, but I believe things have changed a bit Yeah. because that wind yesterday was insane. I don't really want to get nailed by that again. So at least we know South Twin and North Twin, we got pounded, but it was relatively brief, brief and we already know what we're 
we're doing terrain wise so the thing that uh, worries me a little bit is that okay. when we came here there was no wind and now there's wind here exactly so what's it like up there exactly and, and that's the thing so do i want to go in a possibly unbroken trail over another peak that i don't know what it looks uh like in more severe wind probably not so we're going to be responsible and not push on like idiots and try to complete our loop just to say we did it um so that's the deal we're gonna melt some more snow we did that last night it worked really well just right out of the uh right out of the tent here uh, we had a stove on each side of the vestibule it's actually quite comfortable all things considered so i think we're going to do that to get some breakfast wraps going um, pack this tent up and then we'll be backtracking so i probably won't share a lot of the same stuff with you but if we get a better view up there maybe uh, we'll break the gopro back out again and you can see us uh, maybe see some summits that aren't covered in fog luckily the, the temps are in the 20s and 30s so we can uh, push some use out of the upright canister i actually kind of didn't end up needing it but i thought it was going to be in the teens and even lower down towards zero at night so i got the inverted setup uh which is better for low temps can but stand up on own. huh my rain cook can stand up on its own it's frozen solid but anyway yeah so two different systems but they're both working in these temps very nice i'm hungry let's pull in some frozen pants and get back on the trail <sighs> Hopefully this wind will calm down. Maybe it's just the early morning temp change thing, but we will soon find out. Making our way out. Just want to show you if you ever hear the term spruce trap. Right there. The, uh, tree limbs stick out. They have an air pocket underneath. Covered with another couple of feet of snow. Mike just fell into that one. This one over here I fell in last night and that's about when I started screaming that I was done with this. Uh, <laughs> I was done with this and that's when we started looking for somewhere to camp out here in the middle of nowhere. That about put me over the edge. But yeah, you can see you go right up to your... Uh, that's actually filled in a little bit, but you go close up to your shoulders. It's uh, fun stuff. Anyway, let's make our way out of here. How's that pine needle tea? Oh my god, there's more than pine needles. There's all kinds of <laughs> just stuff. Yeah. Good for what else you drink up. We're getting into that uh we had some steep downhill last night, which can only mean one thing since we're backtracking and not doing a loop. Steep uphill. And then uh once we get that out of the way, goggles on get beaten up on south twin and then but from there on out for the next two days it'll either be for the most part either flat relatively or um downhill so this should be our last uphill push for the trip yeah of course that's easy to say now but we can actually do it That's our 
I passed right there from yesterday. That's awesome. We did miss this. It, it's working out well. Working out well. It's working out well. It's working out well. well, well. Taking a little lunch break. Mike's heating up some food for some bowl of noodles in its own little bowl. Super convenient. Some hot chocolate and some coffee. Very nice. Melt some fresh snow. Yeah, right off the trees. It's right. Clean. Instead of earlier, you saw what I dealt with. That was. That's gonna go in the soup because I won't notice all the right. things. Right. Mix it right in. That's what I'm doing. I'm gonna put mine in the uh, spaghetti and meat sauce that's wrapped in the uh, wrapped in my neck warmer here. Shut that so it cooks a little faster. And then we'll just melt some more snow, like Mike said. Uh, we're right kind of on schedule for what we wanted to do today, right? It's about 12.30, we're in between. We just summited South Twin, we're going towards North Twin, we're just kind of in between the two. Oh, damn. Oh. Hot food is the best thing in the world, Mike. Huh? Hot food is the best thing in the world. Yeah. Love it. Mike's got some nice fancy mocha coffee there. A couple instant coffees and hot chocolate mixed together. Yeah. Fancy. Warming the hands up and warming the soul. Isn't that nice? I've decided to be boring and go pure caffeine pills because I'm evil. Your hands all right? Cold. Hands are cold. All right, so we're gonna warm up, eat some food, head towards that North Twin. And then after that, find somewhere to uh, camp Maybe a little more relaxed than yesterday. Maybe. I'm sure we wouldn't go and push ourselves too far or anything. Yeah. So I'm sure there's still plenty of wind on the film. But believe me, it is way calmer than yesterday. This is uh, North North Twin where we were getting, not not when we were getting knocked over, but the first one we came to where we we're getting blown around a bit, but we're not getting blown around at all right now. Although there's just a nasty little clouds. And now Washington behind Mike there, you can't even see it at all. Just a couple minutes ago it was there, but slowly getting covered. Washington is getting hammered by some snow right now. Or, from their perspective, uh, it might just be a light snow squall, I don't know. But, looks like a lot of snow from here. Or at least they're sitting in the clouds, we're getting a little bit of snow. Alright, go for it. Working! <laughs> Woo! Ah! <laughs> well, Mike went sledding again, so I guess we gotta catch up to him. Try to ski. See his tracks. <laughs> Oh, I almost made it. Yeah, you're flying. I thought you were going to be further away. That's why I set up the camera. I was like, I'll be alone for a little bit. <laughs> now the fun part begins. Leaving the trail in search of a camp spot. We said uh, if we don't find something by five, that's go time. We got to camp somewhere. And it's about quarter of right now. So. Mike's headed in. We got a feeling about over here to the left, so we're gonna check it out. Basically, we just find a spot that's off trail enough and start stomping it. Stomp it! Oh, 
All right, so got a nice little uh, tamped out section with the snowshoes. Kept the packs on, so it really crushed it down good. And uh, as you can hear, Mike is leveling things out with the snow shovel. I got the Camp brand snow shovel. Collapses down. It's about a pound and a half or less, I think, 20 something ounces. Um, nice for fine tuning as well as uh, digging holes for dead men spikes for your tent setup and whatnot. Now that I completely broke a sweat, almost stomping all over that, we'll dig ditches. I made toilets. And yes, uh, there are bathrooms over there. Two bathrooms. Nobody wants to uh, share bathrooms. We're, we're above that. We're classy. Uh, little pack area. And obviously the tent will go over there. Got a little bit of daylight left, which is nice. Big difference from yesterday. Plus there's no freezing rain, which is awesome. Last night it was freezing rain in the dark. Tonight, um, I'd say we're probably three miles away from the car, three or four max, four maximum. Um, so tomorrow should be good. We'll get an early start out of here. Um, hit the trail, finish it off. Uh, maybe around late lunchtime, we'll be able to get a uh, burger, which uh, I tend to enjoy from one of the local uh, vendors around here. Maybe uh, see what kind of cheeseburgers they have. And then we will get on the road again. But enough about that. I guess I better get in there before Mike starts thinking I'm just filming so I don't have to shovel. and we're rolling. Got the old MSR rapid fire going. First trip within the wild. Working pretty well. Melting snow, cooking meals. Got the old inverted canister method going there. Let's me get uh, a lot colder weather use out of it. Very happy with that find. They don't make them anymore, but that's what eBay's for. Four, 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 four. Let's see what daylight looks like. Oh, I forgot we got that view of the mountain kind of through the trees there. Nice way to wake up. Not necessarily dying to go out there right away. Yeah, I'm filming you first thing in the morning. Not what a true friend would do. My hair's all messed up. Now my makeup on. I look like that. I look terrible too, so now we're even. <laughs> Today shouldn't be too bad. We can relax at camp, but you know, we're not gonna screw around too much. Um, but have, oh. have a fun morning. Yeah, man. Hike out. It's been a good time. It has been really fun. We had campsite number one was, uh, <laughs> The, our emergency uh, experience crammed in between a bunch of trees, which in New Hampshire is no joke. It's not a good idea to hike at night <laughs> when there's six feet of snow, and it's not broken, in the dark, and you're lost. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, yeah, during the summer you can just bushwhack until you find the trail, but or, or bushwhack towards the summit, whatever. But we would have eventually gotten there, but hitting spruce traps and bushwhacking and snow it's just not worth the energy when you have a car to get back to at a certain time frame we did 
crushed some miles in snowshoes and we were just at our wits end. But I really like coming across those summits and actually seeing them. We, we saw them in fog and wind and then we saw them in a more ideal condition. That's really cool. But anyway, I think it's breakfast time for us and then we'll, uh, we'll pack this campsite up, do a little nice hike out. It seems like the weather should be nice today as well. Getting reorganized to pack up. Um, now sometimes people do ask, uh, you know, what gear I have and whatnot in the videos. Uh, well, first off, be warned that I don't necessarily know what the hell I'm doing, but I am still alive. And second off, uh, I'll put links in the uh, video description. I did do a video last year where I showed the gear I took out on a winter trip. So I'll link that here. And um, there are some changes, of course, because there's two of us. So major changes. I think actually I'll just make a separate video and I'll, I'll link that right here as well. Um, and I'll show you whatever I swapped out. So between the two videos, you should be able to see what I carried on this trip. And I'll put uh, stuff in the details of the video description as well. But obviously, bigger tent than I carried in that initial gear video. Uh, this is a Nemo 3P. Swapped out my, I had more of that style kind of stove that Mike has over there, a pocket rocket style. Um, I did swap out for the rapid fire. I'll do a separate video on that too for the sake of time, but there are some definite advantages to that because it goes into inverted mode. Um, and then some minor things like the neck wrap and the goggles. Um, the goggles I borrowed from Mike, the neck wrap is a new addition. And uh, what my wife wants to call a fanny pack over there. You might not need that, but that's good for me to car carry all this camera junk. And uh, of course Mike has all his gear too. Maybe he'll throw a video up. You never know. <laughs> yeah, or he might not. You should subscribe to his channel just to follow the mystery. Will he post a video or I not? I would like to. He's going to. I would like to. He's going to. But anyway, yeah, so that's just a little blurb on the gear. Um, snowshoes I had last time, but, you know, maybe I'll talk about those in a specific video sometime too. Um, mine are just real entry level, like $50 Alps snowshoes. And Mike has um, Atlas, which is a very good brand. They're 930s. Um, not to go off on too much of a tangent, but mine over there, you know, you get them for a little bit less, but um, they've done well on some other trips. But for this trip with the wetter snow and the more elevation gains and stuff, the bindings were taking a beating, whereas uh, Mike was having no problem with his 930s. So it really depends on your usage. I might have been pushing mine uh, to the limit of what they're really designed for, but live and learn. I do. Let's see the summit too. See the summit collapsible mug. Fail. And you know, I usually don't take these on trips. I take tin cans. So this hasn't gotten that much use. But I brought it out because it's winter and I had a lot of stuff crammed in my thing. My pack that is. And uh, I got a little pinhole right along one of the collapse creases. Leaking all over my glove. So, not only does it hold and smell. <laughs> oh no, Mike is not happy with this. But they're not summer. trustworthy. And I haven't given a bad review on something in a, ever. But you're not a fan of the collapsible seat of something? No. No. And no. I just realized because of the reflection of my coffee that I had my headlamp on. Oh yeah, I've done that in plenty of videos. It's like broad daylight and people are like, well, did I guess he thinks he looks cool wearing that? No, I just forgot. Welcome to the club. Now see, I just noticed my hat's not pulled all the way down. So do I have like a cool, like extra tall hat looking thing going on? Like the extra room for a condom? So we both look like assholes. That's great. It's a good finish to a video. I can just hear the really like the ultra hardcore leave no tracers. Dude, the snow wasn't like that when you got there. An animal can tell you were there. Leave no trace. Shut up. <laughs> well, leave no trace if you don't mess with any trees or the grass snow is not part of it. You'd be surprised how far people take it. I haven't heard it yet, but nothing will surprise me. You left footprints in the snow. You're kidding me. I haven't heard it yet. <laughs> Just wait. Guess we're about ready to get back on the trail, huh? Yeah. 
not bad. Yeah, I didn't even mention uh, the feral, <laughs> the feral dog attack last night. Oh yeah, <laughs> it wasn't really an attack, but we started hearing some barking. And we we're like, that's not a coyote. It's more like a regular dog bark. But you see the fallen down log right up there? Uh huh. That's where he was. We kept hearing barking, and then he, yeah, it got about as close as that, and then finally uh, took off the other direction. I don't but. know. Unless coyotes bark. <laughs> it had to have been a feral dog. Yeah, we're thinking. We're, I mean, we're getting, we're a lot closer was, to the road today than we were yep, yesterday. Yep, yeah. Yep, yep. So somebody must have dumped the dog, and uh, I don't know how long it's going to last out here, but. Um, or it was a coyote, and maybe they bark. I don't freaking know. I know they howl because I've heard them. Sure, but never been barked at by one, so. I don't know, but it was Actually, weird. Actually. It was like a yapping. No, they do. Oh. Because remember when they were on the trail for that game? And they were all together going, oh, yeah. arr, arr, arr. That was we were a, in that uh, was West Virginia, at Dolly Sods. That was a coyote. Right. Well, was, <laughs> he was like, that was a he scout. was getting ballsy. No, it was a scout. They went back and told the, you know, this isn't food. Yeah, obviously they gave him the right message because uh, they didn't come back, which is nice. But we did keep those packs close to the tent. I'm trying to wake up to a sharp attack. <laughs> all right, let's get these things back on our back. And they did bark. I can't remember with the coyote attack when they were like running. And oh, I'm sure they'll set us straight in the comment section, so go ahead do and that. tear us apart. Anyway. Well, it could be either one. I want to know. Let's go. Yeah, definitely weird to actually walk around freely without the snowshoes. Yeah. You get used to having them on for so long, then you realize suddenly, eh, maybe, maybe I can actually walk with my own feet. There's nothing like being on the trail for a few miles, hours give you a good opportunity to think about things and I think that Mike may have come to a revelation of his own a little breakthrough on his dog attack last night oh yeah definitely yeah, yeah. now what's your new theory Mike. that but this is the end of the video so people have already shouted this probably through the comment section but well, tell, tell them what, what you think now I feel as though it yes. wasn't a coyote all right that's it was out too small first of all all right it was a pup but, but it was graceful in movement so not necessarily domestic movement, so any regular dog would not have moved through the snow. So slick. Or the woods, so slick. So? You know, it scattered, it looked, scattered, looked. That's a good impersonation, yep. by the way. Scattered, it looked, scattered, looked. I think it was a fox. All right. So if foxes can bark with a high pitch. And I have heard them make noises. It was. And they seem like they're high pitcher. I just, high pitch your. That's a little pitchy. Yeah. So I think it's a fox. Tear me apart if you want. All right. That's my conclusion. Final answer? Final answer. Well, we just caught a glimpse of some cars through the woods over there, so I believe we are back. We were the only car there, but as usually happens with these trips, we end during the weekend, so we got some Sunday day hikers in the lot with us, I'm sure. Taking those spikes off. That'll be the signal, the end of a trip. But we are back. About four miles hike today. Six yesterday. 10 on that first day of mostly uphill. So around a nice 20 mile jaunt through the woods and snow and sleet. A couple summits. I would call that a successful trip. I'm glad to have had Mike along for the trip. That's always fun. Glad you guys could join me as well. So, mission complete. Till next time, I'm Syntax77. But right now, it's cheeseburger time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>